uh, investigation that was done did reveal some uh, low-level contaminants in the fill of on the land. Put a hold on them from doing any work until this testing this whole thing. Getting at an ab initio then, what I'm saying is when it came when they came to site plan review, by my reading of your rules, that 21E information should have been included. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. No, that'll be included when we come through the final site plan. For final. Okay, well yeah. typically the way that I always had to handle it, I was a zoning manager in wireless, we had to have that kind of information up front. They had 120 days from that point. Because the testing was probably done in June. They should have notified somebody at that point. So this is what we're trying to get to. So I got all gussied up today, rode on down, checked out the file in person. That's my father. And chances are, if you're living in the continental United States and you're over the age of 20, that you've eaten food that he has worked on uh, as far as toxicology to help protect you which makes it all the more amazing that this particular site used to house a soup kitchen. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, I'd like to review the application for 525 Beach Street. I uh, covered my inf information today. Uh, the EPA sent me some information about the uh, contamination that was there, and I read the uh, the, the rules. And I, I've seen the ZBA approval. Yeah. Uh, the rules and it indicates that there may have been something that apparently overlooked. This 21E gets your rule 1717060. Yeah. Uh, if applicable, a shadow study and assessment report pursuant to Chapter 21E of the MGL. It looks like that would have been applicable, and there was testing done in May that I read about mm -hmm. on the developer's website. Yeah. And basically, my father retired as a research chemist, toxicology. I was a yep. zoning manager, and I'm like, how did this get through ZBA without it, this has not been managed? What's that got to do with ZBA? They still have to clean the site. Well, they have to clean the site, but it should have been presented. To get a building permit, they have to clean the site. I understand. They the site. I understand. Right? So, what's that got to do with the ZBA? Listen, listen. What I'm trying to tell you is this, okay? Before it got to ZBA, it had to go through site plan review, okay? It got denied by site plan review. Right, okay, that's what I'm here to research, okay? Yeah. So I'd like to find out, I'd like to look at the file and see what happened there, and then as far as ZBA goes. All you're going to find is a denial letter. Okay, can I see that, please? We haven't done a site plan review yet until the variance is approved. Right. Because apparently we'll, it's we'll, been appealed. So until we get certification that the variance has been approved and the appeal has been you know, overturn, then you can start a uh, second review. Time out. They're saying it's okay to get it on the back end. It should have been submitted on the front end. Okay, I showed you where they knew that there was contamination back in May. Here they are telling the EPA they didn't know until December. That's crazy. They had an affirmative duty to come forward with this information, but they didn't want the public to know. Look right there. $25,000 allocated for the environmental remediation. All right. What was that for? Cleaning up dog shit? No, it's not dog shit. It's bullshit. That's what it is. They didn't want the public to know what was involved, so they kept it and hid it on the down low. But I'm not a down low brother, so, you know, I had to out them. I'm just trying to find out, you know, how Revere handles the process here, because, you know, it's different from place to place. So, initially, it came as high plan review and was denied. That's right. And, and that's, that's the end of it. We haven't from, seen anything yet. Excuse me. Okay. The site plan review in Revere is done before the ZBA, correct? They come to us with a set of plans. Right. They don't meet our zoning requirements. We deny them. Okay. And they go to the ZBA. Okay. The ZBA issues a variance. They come back to site plan review mm -hmm. and start the site plan review process. Okay. Well, we're getting an ab initio then. What I'm saying is when, it came, when they came to site plan review, by my reading of your rules, that 21E information should have been included. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. No, that'll be included when we come through the final site plan. 
for final. Okay, well, yeah. typically the way that I always had to handle it, I was a zoning manager in wireless, we had to have that kind of information up front. And so that's why I'm trying to see, and before we even you know, set foot in uh, SPR, we had to say, okay, well, it's already being done, you know, here it comes, just hold on a minute, we'll supplement something we like that. We just review it for zoning you know? compliance. Mm -hmm. It doesn't meet zoning compliance, it's denied. Mm -hmm. Then when they, if they get the relief, mm -hmm. it's required, they come back to us, mm -hmm. then we start the site plan review process. Right. Then we review the 121E report, right. uh, they'll do the preliminary assessment that they probably have already done, mm -hmm. any kind of, um, Remediation has to be done. Right, it has to be approved through you know DEP. So yeah. all that yeah, will be done. Yeah, and as far as that appeal goes, I spoke with Mr. Pizzano who filed that appeal, and he yeah. actually, depending on how things go, he would like to release it. He's not against the housing for these people. Okay, yeah. he just has concerns that it's done properly. Oh yeah, that, so do we. Right, of course. Right, so he wants well, to know. Like, well, but here's the, the city's a responsible right. party here. Yeah. So this land is in the city. We want to make sure before a building permit is issued right. that a remediation plan is approved by uh, DEP. Of course. And that'll all be done. Of course, so what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, though, initially, that testing on their website, the developer's website, yeah. said it was the testing was done in May. So I know how long that testing takes. It doesn't take, mm -hmm. they say, they claim now from the EPA information I got today that's going up on their site soon, yeah. they say they found out in December. But I, I find it hard to believe. And so, but what his concern is, is several fold in mine yeah. is okay, that, that owner who got that, who, whoever had the testing done initially, I call the testing mm -hmm. company, haven't heard back from them, whoever did that initially, mm -hmm. uh, they had 120 days from that point because the testing was probably done in June. They should have notified somebody at that point. So this is what we're trying to get to. So anyway, if I could just take a look at the at the uh, SPR uh, file for a minute, and I'll be all set. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, okay, uh, counsel, if you could, when did your client come into possession of the testing results? If you could, counsel. Counsel. This is crucial. If, you know, if your client got that a long time ago last year. 